powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening. Thanks for joining us this Monday. I'm Janelle Slade. Jay is off tonight. The Yellowstone grizzly bear is once again a threatened species after a judge out of Missoula overturns a federal decision today. After he blocked a long awaited bear hunt in Wyoming earlier this month, the spotlight has moved to federal judge Dana Christensen. The fate of the bears resting on his ruling. Well, today's ruling stops plans by Idaho and Wyoming to allow grizzly bear hunts this fall. In late August, attorneys for tribes and conservation groups asked Judge Christensen to overturn last year's decision by Fish, Wildlife and Parks to no longer consider the bears as a threatened species, removing them from the endangered species list. Now, the agency and wildlife agencies in Idaho, Wyoming and Montana argued the bears had recovered to the point that the grizzlies in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem no longer warranted special protection. But in his final ruling today, Christensen says the service had failed to logically support its conclusion that the current greater Yellowstone population is not threatened by its isolation. Instead, he say, states the service failed to make a reasoned decision as required by law that changing the protections for bears around the Yellowstone wouldn't also impact grizzlies in other areas like the Northern Continental Divide. Earth Justice attorney Tim Presso says the plaintiffs are especially pleased to have stopped the hunts this fall. The most immediate thing we were concerned about was that Wyoming and Idaho had plans in place to kill up to 23 grizzly bears this fall in a trophy hunt that would have been the first in more than 40 years in the Yellowstone region. So this ruling means that that can't go forward and those bears won't be killed for uh, trophies. It's not yet known whether the Fish and Wildlife Service will appeal Christensen's ruling. More victims come forward over the weekend in a massive Mile City sex abuse case that dates back decades, but we learned today their abuse may never see justice. That's because, as it turns out, none of the victims can pursue criminal charges under the latest Montana law. The Mile City Police Department and the Department of Justice have now launched a criminal investigation into former longtime Mile City athletic trainer James Doc Jensen accused of sexually abusing possibly hundreds of boys for more than two decades. And new today, the Miles City Police Chief tells Q2 his detectives have interviewed Jensen over those allegations. However, Jensen has not been jailed. While investigators conduct interviews, John Heenan, the lawyer for the 19 men named in that lawsuit, is drawing attention to Montana law. Heenan says although the state legislature doubled the statute of limitations from 10 to 20 years last year, they did not make the statute retroactive. So Jensen's victims are not protected. Jensen was fired from Miles City as a trainer back in 1998, which would have placed a handful of the hundreds of possible victims in line to press criminal charges. Some of our clients won't get the justice they deserve in the criminal system, so we're contacting legislators working hard to get the law changed so that people like this uh, Jim Jensen and others uh, can never rest easy, you know, having committed crimes on children. Now, the suit claims there could be as many as 200 victims. There is a hotline set up by the Department of Justice for victims to report sexual abuse and come forward in this case. A woman killed in a head on crash in the Billings Heights on Sunday has been identified. 20 year old Haley Hudson Byler died in the crash that sent two others to the hospital. The incident happened near Wicks Lane and Nutter Boulevard in the Heights. Billings police say a car driven by a 16 year old male first collided with a pickup truck, then fled the scene only to hit the other car and cause the fatal crash. When officers arrived, they found the 16 year old driver unconscious with serious injuries. They also found two 20 year old women in the second car. Hudson Byler was the driver and was pronounced dead on scene. The other passenger was seriously injured. Now, the driver of the pickup truck that was first hit was not injured. That crash is under investigation, but police say speed and alcohol are considered factors. A U.S. State Department ruling Friday could put construction of the Keystone XL pipeline back on track. The State Department published a response to an order by Montana District Court Judge Brian Morris to conduct a more thorough review of the pipeline's pathway through Nebraska. Now that review says major environmental damage from a leak is unlikely, and if there was a leak, TransCanada has a plan to quickly respond. Today, TransCanada spokesman Matthew John says the company remains committed to the project. The Keystone Pipeline would run from Hardesty, Alberta to Steel City, Nebraska. 
part of that route cutting through the eastern side of Montana. TransCanada has said it expects to start construction in 2019. Turning to weather, Bob, we are just entering fall, but you are talking about winter. It's hard to believe and it's just a, a few days away. Let me show you what we're talking about. These are going to start off with our temperatures and we're going to get up to 60 degrees tomorrow, 69 degrees on Wednesday. Uh, then another cold front moves through and our high will drop down into the 54 degree reading on Thursday, Friday 50 degrees and then overnight lows on Friday night down into Saturday morning are going to change to what we might even see. Temps get down cold enough we might see some rain mixing with snow and so here's how much snowfall before the computer models are saying we could see in the Billings area about half an inch, two inches at Lewistown. Great Falls could see almost two inches, two and two thirds inches of snow expected to cut back. Could see a couple of inches of snow over at Kalispell. Now that's all possible by the time Friday and Sunday get here, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday get here. So we'll see what happens. It looks like it could be an interesting weekend. So enjoy the 60s while we have them for the next couple of days, you know? All right, thanks so much, Bob. Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh defended himself in a televised interview tonight, once again saying he's innocent of the sexual assault accusations leveled at him by two women. He also declared his intent to see the confirmation process through the end. CBS's Nicole Killian reports from the Capitol. Brett Kavanaugh says he's the target of a character assassination. I'm not going to let false accusations drive us out of, the, out of this process. The Supreme Court nominee appeared on Fox News with his wife, Ashley. We're looking for a fair process where I can be heard and defend the, my integrity, my lifelong record, my lifelong record of promoting dignity and equality for women, starting with the, the women who knew me when I was 14 years old. I'm not going anywhere. Kavanaugh spoke out after another sexual misconduct claim surfaced. Deborah Ramirez, a former Yale classmate, told The New Yorker Kavanaugh exposed himself at a drunken dormitory party, then thrust his penis in her face and caused her to touch it without her consent as she pushed him away. Kavanaugh has denied the allegations. His wife talked about how their children are coping with the attention. We told them at the very beginning of this process, this will be not fun sometimes. You're going to hear things that people feel strongly and you need to know that and just remember you know your dad. Democrats want Thursday's hearing postponed so the accusers claims can be investigated. Republicans accuse them of orchestrating a smear campaign to delay Kavanaugh's confirmation. President Trump also weighed in. There's a chance that this could be one of the single most unfair, unjust things to happen to a candidate for anything. GOP leaders are promising a quick vote on Kavanaugh after the hearing. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Kavanaugh supporters hope to have him seated on the court in time for its fall session, which starts October 1st. Coming up on tonight's 10 o'clock news, it's time to open the curtains for a look back at the life of the Alberta Bear Theater. Plus, we meet a man who took his struggles and helped others learn from his past. And in sports tonight, Scott updates a scary injury for Wyoming Cowboy J.R. Vizane that happened Saturday at a rodeo in Texas. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.